So the seven facts and flows of freedom, you're beginning with the first one, which is foresight, the ability to predict what will happen or be needed in the future and act or power of foreseeing. So when you are foresight itself is a fact of the vibe of freedom. And when you are in the vibe of freedom, foresight actually continues to flow. So you plug into your inner innate ability, intuitive ability to sense into what will be needed in the future, to sense into, you know, um, what, what's likely to happen if I make this choice. Really what it's doing is when you are in the vibe of freedom, because you choose to be in the vibe of freedom, you immediately, it's as if you switch on the light bulb of being able to see. We all have this intuitive ability. It's just a matter of us really trusting ourselves. Now, when I looked at this and I thought, okay, where in my life have I chosen the vibe of freedom, even though I didn't necessarily feel that? And it was really very early on in my journey when I chose, okay, this next phase is going to be about living an extraordinary life where all aspects of my life coexist. And at, at that time, you know, yeah, sure, I went, went off to Bali, but I had a whole host of accountabilities, responsibilities, right from, you know, a mortgage all the way to a, a child who was not wanting to go to university. So, yeah, I had made that choice, but I wasn't actually free of all of those responsibilities. Now, that was a very big choice that I had made. Initially, I went there only for three weeks, and those three weeks became nine years. So in that initial three weeks, what could I do? I mean, I just had to say, okay, right, I sign up to having this freedom of choice because I say so. And the reality was, from a logical standpoint, I didn't necessarily feel that I had the freedom. And I had made that choice. So I did, I did utilize my ability to make the choice. So therefore, I did act in a freedom vibe. And given that that occurred, I did not know how to live an extraordinary life where all aspects of life coexist. You know, I had no idea. I didn't even know what constituted all aspects of life. To me, it was, you know, money, work, home. Little did I realize there's a full spectrum to how we can choose to live our life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, and environmental. That had emerged from this foresight just because I chose the vibe of freedom, I was able to tune into, what does this even mean? And initially it was envisioning what might happen in the future. And it is in that envisioning and I, I realized that it just envisioning was great because it made me feel the vibe of an extraordinary life, like really having that freedom of all aspects of life coexisting. I also understood that what I had done was made freedom a consequence of living a full spectrum life. Whereas actually it was the other way around. I chose freedom, that is what gave me the foresight of it isn't only physical stuff. There is more to it. And maybe when you go beyond the physical, you will have access to the extraordinary life. I gave myself the ability to allow, to experience the extraordinary life in the way it flowed without necessarily following it a prescribed way in which it should show up. I gave myself the freedom to experience 
what was flowing as is. That detachment from holding on to exactly how something was going to turn out, which was my natural tendency, literally multiplied the flow of freedom. I felt unleashed, I felt unstoppable. And I was able to pause and look at, okay, if this has occurred now, something I couldn't have predicted, what do I, what do I believe is going to happen next? It got me to really understand what a belief is. You know, and I remember coming up with, oh, I believe um, that these conversations that I'm supposed to have to get my home um, in, in, in London into the market. So, and, um, you know, just really pause paying my mortgage whilst the sale is occurring uh, in such a way that I didn't even accrue the penalties. It was unheard of. But somehow I saw that I could actually make that ask. And it just this power of foreseeing the, the future in terms of, um, you know, yeah, this, the, the house has a huge amount of equity. So the bank is very, very comfortable. I just have to make this ask. And then it was like, okay, who am I going to make this ask to? A call center rep? I don't think so. I don't want some note on my account. I just have to talk to the right person. And literally I would pause and engage with that. And I, I ran the Inspired Leaders Network in, in the UK. So I, I knew how to get to the top echelons of any major corporation to have a conversation. At the most they'll say no. So what does it matter? I am where I am anyway. Doesn't mean I have to just suddenly stop my plans. Literally what it did was choosing the vibe of freedom, even though I didn't necessarily feel within me that I was free. Freedom, the vibe of freedom started to flow. I started becoming more comfortable with allowing and observing very deeply. I understood that the fullness of this extraordinary life where all aspects of life coexist is beyond just physical aspects. I had many earth angels, by the way, you know, that supported me to understand what, what's beyond the physical. Mental, okay, I get that. Well, what else? And why do we have to have these other things? You know, my very dear friend, JP was, came to visit and it was wonderful because she had done some really deep dive into, you know, what does it mean to have well-being, you know, a whole a wholesomeness to well-being, and from that emerged <clears throat> my distillation of all aspects of life as physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, and environmental. I didn't coin it up, you know. I just understood it and owned it for myself and very proactively started working in a full spectrum way. So for me, it was like, if I'm to go beyond this aha of understanding aha, extraordinary life is a life that is lived in a full spectrum way where every step of the way, I know that I'm making the choices and every step of every choice I make further accentuates the experience of freedom, gives me the encouragement to make more choices that I believe are the best for me. It's that, that started to multiply, became such a wonderful observer of, okay, I made this choice, this is the consequence, here's how it is showing up, 
physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and environmentally. I literally, in my in my journal, which I mean, I I, I come from the IT industry, so I don't know when was the last time I actually put pen to paper. It was all done online, you know, for decades even before that. And I did buy journals. I bought big, long journals and used my hand to write what I was observing. And I'm sure that made a difference. And then it became a lot of fun. Sorry. It became a lot of fun to start working with foresight. For me, what it wasn't about what you could see in the future. I didn't even believe in astrology or anything like that. For me, it was like, you know, you see what you get and it is here and, and that is it. And then you can analyze what has occurred before, use those as benchmarks. And then you can, uh, you know, with, with reasonable confidence, predict what could happen in the future. Foresight? You know, what is that? What's the basis of this? What's the scientific foundation I mean, I was living a life where there was no scientific foundation to what I was even asking. It's just, just the very nature of living an extraordinary life, all aspects of life coexist with ease, joy, and grace. I mean, what? It's just not possible. But it began with literally choosing the vibe of freedom to make this choice and lo and behold, I did make the choice. And it wasn't just that I made the choice and then changed my mind, I actually acted on it. And it was like, nobody pushed me to go to Bali. I declared that choice and I actually made it happen. I hadn't got the how much better can it get question at that time. I'm sure things would have moved even faster if I had. But I did work with the fact of this enhanced ability to connect to my intuition and make choices, engage with the consequences, choose the consequences, declare the consequence as the choice that I'm about to make. And that the, this whole idea of, you know, understanding the consequence of a choice I'm about to make, which will result in an action, which will, which will produce a consequence. And then I go back and choose the consequence and declare the consequence, I'm sure came from this whole idea of foresight. Just taking that little bit of a pause rather than I've chosen it, I just go act on it. That, that little bit of an, uh, a pause to look at what's the consequence was me starting to develop my own inner ability of foresight. And I wasn't going into some woo-woo magical land of predicting anything. I was using my logical mind to understand logically, if I made this choice and I took this action logically, if somebody else was doing it, what would be the consequence of that action? Well, that is quite likely to be the consequence of my action. Who are the people does it impact? Okay, these are the people it impacts. Do I want to move forward with it? Yeah. Do I want to move forward with it? No, not right now. So what am I going to choose instead? What's the consequence of that? Fine. I started communicating my choices and my decisions in terms of consequence. Even this whole piece about living an extraordinary life where all aspects of my life coexist with joy, ease, and grace. Joy, ease, and grace was the consequence. All aspects of life coexisting was a methodology, was a way in which I was going to you know, deliver on that consequence. Extraordinary life with ease, joy, and grace was really the consequence. So in choosing what action I'm actually going to embark on, the question was, okay, how does it accentuate? How does it accelerate? How does it bring velocity to living an extraordinary life with joy, ease, and grace? 
And that gave rise to this understanding in me that I actually I'm talking about all aspects of life. I have to detach myself from being attached to all aspects of life means work and home and, and that's it. You know, let me get into the flow and let the definition and meaning of extraordinary life emerge. I didn't even have the context of full spectrum at the time. It was more like home life balance, which is what, as you know, from in my world, gets you out of balance, trying to balance the stuff. So the first fact of choosing the freedom vibe. So here's the thing. You choose the vibe of freedom because you choose. No reason, literally. I choose it because I say so. And everything like a domino from that choice that you make, all of these facts and flows start to get mobilized. And then you work through each one to experience it for yourself. You know, so many times we would, uh, I, I observe, and it was certainly true for me, where you, you know, become indecisive about something or not necessarily communicate a decision that I've made within, but know that people might be upset about it. So I won't necessarily communicate it fully. But I, I, what was happening there was I wasn't considering the full consequence of having made a choice. So I was deciding on the, you know, the consequence of juggling a little bit of ambiguity and a little bit of moving things forward. Nobody was satisfied. There was no fulfillment there. So I understood that what I was choosing was keeping myself, you know, guessing and keeping everybody else guessing. And it was felt quite precarious and quite stressful. The moment I understood that, aha, uh -huh, if I operated that way, and again, you could, you could say it's foresight, if I operated that way, this is a consequence. I'll be exhausted and not necessarily achieve the end result. I was able to say, okay, I've got to get clarity in my choice. Because nobody else is choosing here. Nobody else ever chooses. You do. Always. Even when you choose to not necessarily be completely clear about the choice that you have made, thinking that it might upset the apple cart, it really upsets your cart. That is carrying a collection of wonderful treasure troves that you may call apples, that will give you that joy, ease and grace. You upset your cart. The vibe, the when you choose the vibe of freedom, it automatically activates flow. And it does that across these seven facts that I'm sharing with you. The first one being foresight brings flow to your innate ability to predict and see what's likely to happen next. How cool is that? The second fact and flow of choosing the vibe of freedom is radiant. And I don't know if you're getting it, but for me, when I realize that this freedom stuff if only I had the freedom to do this, if only I had this, then I would have the freedom to go here or go there. I mean, hello. What I'm saying here is you choose the vibe of freedom just because you choose it. And then work through these seven facts. See the flow of each one multiply. Freedom becomes your unequivocal reality. Now you can choose 
what you're going to do in the context of money or relationship or love or health or whatever it might be. So radiant is a fact of the freedom, choosing the freedom vibe, and it flows when you choose the freedom vibe. Radiant is sending out a light, shining or glowing brightly. So when you are choosing the vibe of freedom, you immediately like switch on. It's like the master switch of radiance. You switch on your radiance immediately, instantly. I don't know whether you, many of you have heard me share this story. I remember doing a salon in Maui and uh, there were some amazing people that came together to that, for that salon. It was one of the first ones I did there. And one of the people that was there, he was a um, 102 year old, 106 year old. It's quite a significant age. I'll have to go back and reconfirm exactly, but certainly 102 as a minimum, possibly even 106 year old uh, man, young man, I would say. To me, when I look at his photos, he doesn't look any more than 50. And he had been in, in, uh, in Chinese um, uh, confinement jail, um, which was the one where they just put you in and there's no light and there's nothing, you're, you're there for 38 years. And basically what had happened was it, he was put in jail at the time when I think the, um, the, there was a change in regi regime that was happening. You know, Japanese had just come in and he who, had, who was a pillar of society at one point suddenly became enemy number one and was put in this jail. And then the Japanese gave way to the Russians or whatever occurred, it was like in another change. And then that gave, that gave way to the Maoist. They completely forgot the people that were in these confinement jails. And at some point, you know, somebody realized that there were a collection of people that were there um, and he was released. And my question to him was, I mean, he totally looked radiant. And my question to him was, you know, what were your first words? I was like, you guys have come to hear me in the salon. I mean, look at it. Look at who we have in our midst. You know, I want to listen to him. And I asked him, what were your first words? And he said, when he came out, the only light he ever saw was when that little hole through which a hand with a bowl would come in once a day to give him some kanji. That was the meal that he would be given each day. And that was the only light that ever came into this confinement cell. So when he got out, he said he was completely bent over and uh, the first words that came out of his mouth were, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm like, what are you thanking? What are you thanking? And he says, oh, thank you for the stars. Thank you for the sky. Thank you for the sunlight. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you for the birds. Thank you for everything. Like, amazing. This guy, I mean, he was totally radiating when he met with us. And he said that with each thank you, it's as if his vertebra was starting to, you know, rise. And it took him many months to really be able to stand up upright. But what I was present to was here he is in a confinement jail. You would think his freedom is totally non-existent he retained his radiance in there. There was no light coming into this jail cell, the solitary confinement cell. And yet he had owned up his radiance. So he was sending out his own light. He was shining and glowing when he met me. And he'd been out obviously for a while by then. But in inside, what this guy did in those 38 years, 
there's a big body of work, the I Ching, the Chinese I Ching, some of you may know about it. Uh, and it was only something that was confined to the Chinese masters who knew how to work with it. He didn't have any, any paper, pen, anything to write on anything. But in those 38 years, he literally broke down the I Ching in a way that regular people could actually work with it. And many of the writings of the Chinese I Ching that guide you on how you can work with it emerge from that seminal body of work that he did in those 38 years of solitary confinement. And I'm sharing this because sure enough, he was in solitary confinement and he chose the freedom vibe while he was there. And as a result, the fact of radiance kicked in and the flow of radiance multiplied and amplified. And that's available to all of us. I mean, he continues to be such an inspiration to me. There's such humility in how he spoke and shared. And he was quite clear. I told him that I would love for you to share your story. And he said, no, another time. We are all here to listen to you. So radiant is the second fact that when you choose the freedom vibe, I say I'd shared this guy's story because it was he chose the freedom vibe in a solitary confinement cell where he was for 38 years. And every fact that I'm going through actually kicked in, the flow accentuated. And when he talked about the I Ching and I mean, my God, this, um, we, we had an I, uh, an I Ching book, you know, and I used to use three copper coins, which came from the Victorian age as a way of working with that I Ching. You know, you use certain, you use certain coins to, you know, decide where you're going to go with the I Ching. Uh, it's a great thing that you use to predict what's going to happen, help you make choices and decisions. Um, and really gets you to understand very logically this is before I knew how to just intuitively connect or use the, the dowsing thing, um, which I wouldn't have gone for because logically it didn't make sense, but the I Ching did, it was very structured and stuff. So all of those pieces actually emerged from that cell without him even writing about it. My God, you know, it's a complicated body of work. I also met the person to whom he just spoke it and then it got written and it got, it's been multiplied from that point on. So what occurred? This guy is in the vibe of freedom. He's starting to foresee, you know, that, that the power of this amazing body of work, which actually is being stifled by only being in the confines of a few masters started to see the, what becomes available if many more people are able to have access to it. It certainly got him to see what that body of work was showing him about what was possible for his future. Radiance was his reality and he started shining the light on making this body of work more and more accessible. And as a result, he kept get, having more and more access to it. Not only was his seeing abilities being, you know, the flow was increasing there, the shining light was illuminating his own understanding. And he would say, to, he said to me, um, so I asked him, didn't you get bored? You know, like every day, the same old kanji, same old kanji, you know? And he said, 
uh, he said, there were so many things I would be very excited about because every time that hand with kanji came in, I knew after I had this, I would have another understanding of this work. And I would have another understanding of that work. And I'm like, okay. So he says, it was like, I would look forward to it that the kanji is going to come. So therefore what I had, what I had been working on the day before had to be completed before the kanji time. So I could work with this next piece. Truly, I mean, that to me, to me, it was like, okay, this is like, he's created his own little curriculum of freedom. I says, look, 38 years is nothing. It's taken, it took more than a century to create this body of work. In 38 years, I was able to do this. It couldn't take any less than that, could it? Okay. <laughs> How amazing. Truly amazing. Takes me to the third fact and flow of freedom, which is ecstatic. feeling or expressing like really almost overwhelming happiness or joyful excitement. <laughs> and when he was describing to me, you know, the build up to um, like this hand with the kanji is about to come and I haven't yet done this. I'm like, how do you even know that you've done it or not? You're not writing anything. You are just thinking. <laughs> He says, I know, I know, you know, you know that this piece you've understood, this piece is going to work out like that. And so he says, I would be like very, very excited to finish this because I knew that the closer I got to the finishing point, I would have a new understanding and I would be overjoyed with that understanding. I'm like getting excited <laughs> listening to him about being in this super confined space. <laughs> you know, getting so um, radiant and ecstatic about what this revelation was going to be. And then it would start again. He was like a child with excitement going to school every single day. I mean, I, I asked him, could you see the walls that were around you? Just wanted to get a sense of the space. He had no comprehension of how large or small this thing was. And he said, no, we couldn't see, I couldn't see anything. But I knew that when I would lie down, my legs, I had to lie down diagonally to be able to spread my legs. So it must be a really tiny cell. Talk about something that you would completely unequivocally say was, you know, his inhuman way of taking his freedom away. And this guy chose the freedom vibe and look at it. It was so expansive for him. I, I was looking, reading one of for the big bodies of work that got created by him. And, you know, the, the Indian Kama Sutra as, as positions for sex is, is very well known. And the person who had actually uh, you know, written up what he'd come up with. I mean, this guy is in a confined cell and this body of work was like 500 pages of different aspects of the human anatomy and particularly the sexual um, centers being the origin of generation of life force that gives rise to healthy birth of new cells and how you work with the act of sex to actually further accentuate. All of this body of work was done through, you know, him, this, and it all, got, it all got discovered in those 38 years. And the person who was sharing it with me literally had like few words, but mostly there were little caricatures of how you would position yourself you know, by yourself. And also when you are with, with a partner. So this whole, the power of sex as a generator of life 
continues to multiply wherever you're at. And it was a, he was ecstatic and so was this other person as they were describing this body of work. And I'm like, oh my God. And I asked him, would you change anything? And he says, no, my God, I would not change a thing. I would be, I would have died maybe 50 years ago. And then we go into what got him, you know, how or why did he go into this cell? He was, mis it was a mistaken identity case. They thought they were putting somebody else in, but he was the one that got caught, caught in. And it came from um, his wife agreeing that he was the person, even though it was a wrong identity when the police came. And so I said, well, my God, you know, so it was she said he was the wrong person. So they went and they, they took him. And so I said, what do you feel about her? And he says, what do I feel about her? She died when she was 40. Look at me, I'm here. Like, okay. He just had these very, you know, passing by, passing by sort of responses to these deep questions that, and people hold on to blaming for so long. And when you choose a vibe of freedom, there is no blame. Who are you blaming? It just doesn't exist. It's non-existent. So you, you know, you've heard me say this before with each pearl of wisdom, the moment you choose it, like I talked about ease, you chose ease, all the facets of ease get activated. You choose the vibe of freedom, all the facets of freedom are activated, full throttle, because it's not just the facts, it's also the flow, the same thing. You choose the vibe of freedom, that fact is anchored and its flow multiplies. The fact of ecstatic is anchored and ecstatic this ecstatic experiences continue to multiply. And when you are in that space, everything flows. He was the one that inspired me actually. But to, before I met him, I would, I, I get these downloads and I would automatically write. And I would always have a journal, different sizes, and so even a tiny little pocketbook type thing, plus the notes on my, on my phone, because I was like, really, they're dependent on those. A download has come, I've got to capture it. I would immediately start writing. But after I met him and after I engaged with everything that he shared and saw the bodies of work that have arisen from those 38 years of confinement, I realized that actually everything comes into my field. I don't need to rush and write it right now. I can write it when I choose to. He had no idea what he was doing, but he would say um, that, you know, this time Mimi comes over and we are going to do this work. So I have a cup of tea. Um, and then he talks about this wonderful fermented Chinese tea that he has and I switch. And I talk about sex and how it can create chi and how it can bring about flow. And then I finish that. And then I talk about something else, have a cup of tea and that's his switch. So it's like, okay, so I can do that. You get all of these downloads, you know, I'll just allow my body to compartmentalize them. And then I can say, right, I want to talk, I want to write about use of magnetism to solve environmental problems. And lo and behold, it would be like, okay, this is the time. And I would just, that the download that I had had some time ago, literally started flowing on that topic. He didn't, he didn't know how he did it. So he wasn't able to teach. The fact that it was possible for him to do that, and that he had already done it that way, it literally, what had happened was, he had achieved that four minute mile equivalent, if you like. So as a result, I was able to do it 
for myself. And I'm sharing this. I know it feels like way out there, but I'm saying to you that you can dramatically transform your own abilities to do whatever it is that you wish to do because so much has already been magically accomplished by so many people and therefore the four minute mile is already there. You choose how you want to work with your own faculties. Begin with the choice of the freedom vibe. Even if you don't feel free, remember when you choose the freedom vibe, physically you may be wherever you may be. You will find in one of the full spectrum aspects that freedom vibe will be anchored. And take it from there. Work through each of the flows. I, or for me, I always begin with lay of the land when I'm working with this sort of understanding. I'm using this guy's example just because it is so stark and so completely contradictory to freedom. And yet his choice of the freedom vibe meant that he lived an expansive, regenerative, thriving aliveness working completely with his senses because there was nothing else to work with. He was able to envision what was being shown to him, even though his, it was so dark that nothing could be seen by the eyes. So the eyes were actually operating like a sensory organ, which is what they're meant to be. We get so caught up with just the physical that the eye is showing us that we don't get the fullness of its benefit. This guy taught me this, under, this, this understanding of the sensory organs are actually called sensory organs because they're meant to sense. And we always are living in a full spectrum way. We may choose not to acknowledge the full spectrum way, but the moment you acknowledge it's a full spectrum living that I'm engaged in, then, then your sensory organs start to make sense. And that leads me to the fourth fact of failure, which is exuberant. Exuberant, really luxuriantly or profusely full, filled with energy, excitement and cheerfulness. That was this guy's reality, unequivocally, no question. And it becomes mine. It becomes yours when you choose the vibe of freedom. The vibe of freedom is so, just the choice of the vibe of freedom is so exciting. I mean, we're only on the fourth one, you know, and look at all of the stuff that we've already talked about, foresight, radiance, ec ecstatic, and now exuberant. Just because you chose the vibe of freedom, all of these start to experience a multiplier effect in terms of flow. Choosing the vibe of freedom, the fact of exuberance becomes your reality and it starts to flow. So now you can go on an acknowledgement tour, acknowledgement in your life, acknowledging physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and environmentally. Where is the evidence of exuberance? What does that even look like? I find the, uh, at a physical level, the exuberance multiplier that we have within us really are our sensory organs. Working with them as sensory organs. Seeing what you see, acknowledge what you're seeing, and then go into eyes as a sensory organ. What is actually being shown to me here? Right, I see this computer and I see the Zoom and I see all of, all of you here. What's actually being shown? 
what's being shown is, to me, is the a level of engagement with this topic of freedom. What's being shown to me is this idea that freedom, you just choose the vibe of freedom and you are free and you're getting it. It's starting to land now with this crazily stark example of 38 years of solitary confinement. I mean, you know, so what's being shown to me is I don't need to give you lots of different examples. We can now go into how do you make it happen for yourself? Because the, this example itself has landed the idea that you can choose the vibe of freedom. That is your choice. You always have the freedom of choice. It's starting to land. You're starting to, you know, break through the ceiling that you might have put on yourself. If only this person hadn't done this to me, or if only this particular project would get to this level, if only this funding arrived, if only, you know, then I'll have the money that I, that I want and I'll be free. You, 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 are, you will not be free even then. If you're not able to be free now, you won't be free then. Freedom is not something in the future. That's the, the exuberant part of freedom. That's the exuberant fact. You feel that exuberance and it fills you up profusely with energy, excitement and cheerfulness because freedom is here and now. It is not someday, one day in the future. There is no freedom someday, one day in the future if you're not able to be free now. So when I looked into this and I, I engaged with Gandhiji, who, um, who, was, the, who was one of the, the leaders that um, enabled um, India to get its freedom. You know, India was, yet had been ruled by various powers for over 600 years or so by then. And he chose to declare that India shall be free in my lifetime. He chose the freedom vibe for himself. Right from that point, nobody could confine him. And he very strategically and very methodically arrived at the nonviolent non civil disobedience movement as a way of achieving this in his lifetime. Now, there were so many times that he was arrested and put into jail and all that stuff. He never lost his freedom, never. And if he had, so much of his energy would go in battling the forces that were arresting him and taking him to jail. Any of the video footage or even the audio recordings of him going to jail had no fight whatsoever because he was free anyway. For him, it was like, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to have the space and time to really reevaluate, regroup, and come up with a whole new strategy, which is still in the umbrella of civil, nonviolent civil disobedience that will move this resolve fast forward. That came from him having made the choice that he was free no matter what. It was, it was at the core of the strength with which he communicated, the conviction with which he communicated from within the jails or outside. In his own way, I mean, this guy who, yeah, sure, he was a barrister and had a, quite an amazing command of language and intellect was phenomenal. But he, you know, he looked very, very basic and simple. And, you know, wouldn't say that he was luxuriously put together or anything like that. And yet the vibrancy of what his thought was 
had all of these qualities of foresight, radiance, ecstatic, exuberance that magnetized people and continues to be a very well orchestrated and implemented strategy. The fifth, oh my gosh, <laughs> I have three more to go. The fifth, <laughs> the fifth fact and flow of freedom is deft, D-E-F-T, which is really about demonstrating skill and cleverness. This very neat, skillful, quick, you know, in, in, in responsiveness, that's a fact of freedom. It gives you that deftness, you know, where you, you become very agile, that lightness. It's an automatic deliverer of lightness of being. When, when we talk about that loss of freedom, it instantly burdens you. Something's occurred and you're not able to move forward because, you know, this occurred and that occurred. It feels so burdensome. The moment you choose the vibe of freedom, that's just a fact. Deft is a fact and deft multiplies. Lightness of being comes in and you really, you just literally plug into your own skillful cleverness with which you're going to resolve particular issues and move forward. It is a fast forward onwards and upwards strategy, you choosing the vibe of freedom. I can't speak this because, you know, I'm not allowed. Well, who told you you're not allowed? You did. And the reality is, even when that is the case, you may not speak it aloud, but you're speaking it, screaming it in your head all the time. So choose the vibe of freedom, work through each of these facts, see them multiply. By the time you get to this number five, you have that lightness of being. You recognize that clever, skillful cleverness that you already have and that brings an agility in your movement and you're able to move forward, which is what was happening with this, with this guy, the Chinese guy in this 38 years of solitary confinement. In the run up to the hand with the kanji, I'm going to achieve this, I'm going to achieve this, I'm going to achieve this. So that I can start on the next piece. Like, Whoa, that sounds so exciting. I can feel the quickness in his movement. The sixth one is open-hearted. Open-hearted is a fact when you choose the freedom vibe and it multiplies open-hearted. What do you feel like when you are open-hearted? You're freely expressing. You're displaying the warmth and your, and, and your, of your own feelings. It's a very kind place to be. You're creating a space of kindness. The connection, the depth of connection is phenomenal. The solitary confinement guy said to me, I said, uh, I, I said, did you ever get a chance to touch the hand that was bringing in the kanji? And he said, every time. And he says, it was electrifying because I knew that there were others like me and many of them. And through this hand of the, that brought the kanji, it's like I connected to millions of them at the same time. I know what he's saying now because he was really referring to the millions of cells. Like the connection was very, very real but it kept that open-heartedness. One of the things that completely shuts off is our heart when we believe that we are not free or when we believe that somebody else has taken our freedom away. Well, whatever you may have believed, unconditionally accept what is, for the sake of playing the game, choose the vibe of freedom. And just work through each of the facts. You just zoom in on each of the facts, you will see the flow multiplies. You can go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And the seventh one is magnetic. It makes you 
magnetic. You choosing the vibe of freedom makes you magnetic because you feel unleashed. Everybody that comes in your clearing also experiences that feeling of unleashment. You become this very popular and attractive one. And in, in doing so, you also become magnetic in terms of magnetizing the exact resources, opportunities, experiences that are going to enable you to achieve whatever it is that you're resolved about. All of these facts that I've talked about, each one of them, you know, all the way from foresight, radiant, ecstatic, exuberant, deft, open-hearted and magnetic is a fact which, whose flow multiplies when you choose the vibe of freedom because you said so. I've shared this with some stories. I invite you to, and I did this for myself, took each one and examined a lay of the land looking at specific incidents in my life to see where I had actually seen evidence of this fact resulting in the flow multiplied. And there were infinite examples in my own life. You will find them in yours. So anchor it as your reality by simply choosing to be in the vibe of freedom. And the domino drops. Over to you, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you, Minu. Wow. I love, love, love the examples you shared with us tonight and how if we choose freedom, we truly can transform our outcome in any given situation. Wow. Unleashing our own greatness in so many ways. We're out of time. I think we could go on and on and on on this one. So I look forward to seeing all of you next week right here, Thursday, either on Facebook Live or Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Minu. Lots of fun and lots of stuff to work with. Yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everyone.